morning diesel heads well it had to happen here we have it the penultimate Oliver Tiger the Mark IV this one made uh, sometime I think after 2011 by Tom Ridley um, the exact date I don't know um, the serial number is T8 double nine three and I could do some research to find the exact date it doesn't really matter the fact is alas these are no longer being made as you probably know following Tom's very sad early death John Goodall who wrote uh, the book The Olivers and a Tiger described the Mark III predecessor for this one as handsome well if the Mark III was handsome this is bellissima the lines of this could have been designed by uh, Leonardo or even Salvador Dali it's beautiful look at those curves look at that neat little rear end <coughs> excuse me look at the curves on those fins it is beautiful it could have been designed by a master artist. In fact, I suppose it was designed by the Oliver father and son team who would, by their own admission, I'm sure, call themselves engineers. Well, engineers can design beautiful things and here is uh, one more example of it. It differs slightly from the previous mark in that, although the bore and stroke are the same, a lot of the internal dimensions are slightly different, so not much transfers over. The piston uh, is slightly longer, so it doesn't um, indulge in that dubious habit of sub-piston induction, which I guess means sucking air in at the very top of the stroke to mix in with the fuel. Uh, this one doesn't do it, and I think all the previous ones did. The finish, as you can see, is immaculate. The fits are fantastic. Uh, I'm still running this in, so I will post a video when it's fully loosened up. But even now, it's it's so free. It's beautiful. Uh, when I got it, however, it wasn't. It was pretty gummed up. I don't think it had been out of its bag for however many years it, since it had been made. And I literally had to give it a, a bath in hot oil to free it up very carefully, very gently to uh, spin it. You've got to be a bit careful with the bearings because you can free the piston crank before the bearings are fully free and if you then run it in that state you might well skid the bearings and ruin them but I think I've avoided that. In fact this thing's so well made that I got it moving, I put a bit of fuel in it and a prop and held it in my hand and flicked it and would you believe it fired in my hand. Um, those of you who know about these things will wonder about the little rear gasket there. I fitted that. I don't think any Oliver ever came with one. But when I took the back plate off, it looked to me like there was a little bit of scoring on the back plate. Um, so I put a fairly thick washer in there, screwed it back good and tight. That should be okay. What else can we see? I see your number there. As I said, the uh, the fits are superb. Really, really superb. I came by this motor not for once on the dreaded Evil Bay, where new ones like this. Uh, have been making 500 pounds and more. I got this from an outfit called Bama Pro, Bamo Pro, run by the aforementioned John Goodall and his son Paul. They specialize in uh, unusual, sometimes unusual engines, antique engines, all of them in good nick. They buy them too, refurb them, uh, put them back, and I got this through them. And um, if you buy from them, you can be sure that you're going to get something which is exactly as described. 
Well, there it is, uh, the Mark IV Tiger Ridley version. I think it would see off all of my 2.5s, including the Para Tiger, which is something of a, a beast. And I will show you it running when it's a bit more civilized. It starts first flick even now. Um, so thanks for watching, stay tuned, and you might see this screaming before too long. Bye-bye.